On this channel, I normally look at tiny desktop PCs as well as custom ITX cases, but today we're looking at something a little bit different. This is the Zima board by Ice Whale, and whilst it's still a tiny computer, it doesn't really look like a typical mini PC. It has no fans at all, exposed SATA ports, and even a PCIe expansion slot. This computer is designed to be a server and not a desktop computer. Let's take a closer look. When you think of a server, you might think of something like this, a giant rack mounted beast of a machine that sounds like a plane with redundant power supplies, high RPM fans and multiple hard drives. And yes, a lot of servers do look like this, but in reality, a server is essentially any computer that just does a job for you. All computers can be servers, but systems designed to be servers are typically optimized for their given role. This server, for instance, is designed to run in your home and not at a data center. So that means it's optimized for an incredibly low power draw of just six watts. Before we start unboxing, I just want to throw a disclaimer out there. This was sent to me for free by Ice Whale for the purpose of this review, but they don't get a say in the video. They don't get to see it before I upload it, and no money has or will change hands. So bear that in mind, but I'm trying to be as unbiased and as objective as possible in this review. Taking a look inside the box, the first thing you'll see is a note from the company founder, and under that, they've given you a sheet of stickers. Inside the box, we have two smaller boxes, one with the Zima board itself and one with a standard three amp power supply with UK, US and EU sockets all included. The Zima board itself comes plastic wrapped and the box itself is pretty nice as you can see. It's got like this glossy finish to the pictures. Open the top by lifting these two tabs on the back and inside is yet another box. This time with the board itself inside an anti-static bag, a user manual and a SATA cable underneath. The model I've got here is the 832 model, which is the highest end model they currently make, retailing at around 200 US dollars. And for that, you get a quad core Intel Celeron 3450 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Looking at the board itself, the first thing you'll notice is its very unique design. There's no cooling fan, so instead you get this interesting array of cooling fins with an acrylic back on the other side. And in terms of actual ports, we've got two USB 3.0s, two gigabit ethernet ports, a mini display port, and on the other side, we've got two SATA ports for your drives, as well as the port to power them. And on the side, we've got PCIe 2x4, which is rated for around two gigabytes per second. Now, the first question on your mind, I bet, is can you add a graphics card? And whilst technically it will fit, I guarantee you that it won't work. The most realistic circumstance I can see for this port is for network or storage expansion. So if you wanted to add more SATA hard drives or maybe add a Wi-Fi card or like a two and a half gigabyte network adapter, this would be the way to do it. So who is this product for? Well, think of this computer like a multi-tool. It can do most things, but it won't do any one thing the best. This is designed for hobbyists and people who like to tinker around with things to learn how they work. So to set it up, plug in an external drive if you want, but that's optional. Plug in your ethernet and power cable and it'll turn on automatically. From here, go to casaos.local and make a local account. And now you're free to explore the Casa OS ecosystem. Gotta be honest, I think this operating system is a little bit half-baked. I could not for the life of me figure out how to make a network share. But I think if you're serious about using this thing to its full potential, you're not gonna be sticking with the default operating system anyway. What's great about the Zima board compared to something like the Raspberry Pi is that it has the x86 CPU architecture, which means it can run all the operating systems you would expect a regular PC to run. You could run Windows on this if you wanted to. I don't think it would run well, but you could. The most relevant operating systems I can see people using with this are TrueNAS for dedicated network storage and PFSense for a router and firewall. Okay, let's get down to my own personal opinion. I like the design. I think it looks cool. I think the build quality is excellent. And just the concept of this computer is really cool. I think if you own a 3D printer as well, you could really make a truly custom looking system with this. But even if you don't own one, there's plenty of custom made enclosures already available to buy online. I think another good thing with the Zim board is that because your options are so vast, it's really unlikely that it's just going to turn into e-waste in a few years because you can eventually just repurpose it to do something else instead. And lastly, I really like the power draw on this thing. I think six watts is excellent. Obviously, your old computer from 2013 can do everything that this can, but the Zima board will do it at a tenth of the power and you're not gonna notice it on your power bill, which is really important when you're running things like this 24 seven. For things I think that could be improved, I would have liked to have seen a dedicated power button. This is the only computer I have ever seen that does not have a dedicated physical power button. And even though this is a server designed to be on 24 seven, it would be nice to be able to turn it off physically without just yanking out the cable. Next, I think the model selection is kind of confusing. There's three models to pick from and I'm not sure how you're supposed to make the decision on which one to buy. 
there's an $80 difference between the bottom and the top model. But how are you supposed to know how much more capable the 832 is compared to the 232? Like are there certain operating systems that the 232 would struggle with? I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching, subscribe to see more, and I will see you in the next one.